Okay, ah. the question that was raised to the room of all these legendary cats, best piece of musical advice you've ever gotten at any point of your life? First off, should we wear the hat while we answer? We probably should. <laughs> We got Brian Sutton here. I cannot wait to hear your answer. The very first winner of the, the yeah. MVP. Inaugural. inaugural. Yeah, he winner. won the track MVP on the first I'm song the George today. George Washington of this hat. Yes, and it looks beautiful on you. It does. The first main bit of advice. Uh, How was, old were you when you got it? This was pretty late on. This was uh, while I was already kind of a pro. But okay. it was just advice about the real meaning of listening. Yes. Musicianship. Yes. As a, as a way of listening. Yes. And understanding the balance of driving and being driven. Yes. The second one is a little more practical as far as uh, like session guitar playing and knowing that a chord on a guitar could potentially have six notes, but maybe you only need two yeah. or three. Yeah. And a lot of times the three is better than the six. Yes. That's Neuter a that thing to fit in the realm of what's happening around yeah like a steel player does yeah sure steel players are, the, are great at that and i'm sure Phil. all right jerry get the hat get the hat this is gonna be good jerry was already uh uh i mean you were already playing for real by the time you were what 10 years old 11 11 years old yeah. i'll just say that okay. jerry has been asked and invited to wear the hat he's not earned the hat yet but yeah he's, that's true he, he's, yeah you gotta well it's, we should it's, a, it's an honorary moment <laughs> this is what it would feel like to be a most important piece guy. of advice you ever got at any age jerry it's weird you ask me that question i go completely blank really yeah mm. that's because there's a deep answer there i guess it's a deep answer but mainly i think uh it was my grandfather who said it's just music yeah, just don't worry about it. Right. Okay. And his grandfather was somebody you may have heard of, uh, a guy named Jerry Reed. Hey. So, uh, that's it. And what about one piece of advice that you wish you would have gotten, but never did? Um, uh, always ask about money first. Right. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because we we tend to give all the work away first and never ask about my clarity. Okay, David Cohen. Oh gosh, keyboard player from Canada. I don't deserve this. Hat. Yeah, that's true. You got to wear a hat if I you want to answer the it. question. But it's, it's an honorary position for now. It's an honorary to wear this. Oh, uh, what was the question? <laughs> Best piece of musical advice you ever got in your life at any age. Don't play thirds. It, it has to do with that of yeah. flavors within chords. And if you're trying to achieve a certain mood, there's certain things to avoid. Mm -hmm. Thirds being one of them. Thirds being one of them. If you're looking to take the happiness and joy out of things, that's a great way of doing it. You like to play the outsides of the chords. Yeah, I'm just like a steel player, I can yeah. dance yeah. around. Right. Commit to nothing. Absolutely. You gotta have the hat. Oh, <laughs> got who is this guy that just joined He's us? Earned his own hat. Uh, Polly Franklin. Uh, the question was, Polly, greatest piece of musical advice you ever got in your life Here, at any age? At any age? And you have to wear a hat when you, <laughs> you answer the wear question. Wear it over top of your. Yeah. Your oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> I was 17. Okay. Played my, my first gig was the Opry, and Billy mm -hmm. Linneman, yeah. uh, the steel players welded, and how we're giving me tips and you know, all this gear stuff and everything. And uh, Linneman goes, I got one for you. He said, Always bring a pencil. And he said, Always plan your escape. Wow. <laughs> Where you park. <laughs> really? <laughs> that was his advice. <laughs> wow. Deep. What's the pencil for? Right, right, a chart back in the, well, <laughs> over my head, over this head. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, uh, who's next? Uh, ben Burgess, our amazing artist. Hey, who is, who is drinking a, hair, uh, a Pennsylvania beer? Do. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> all right, this is gonna be good because Ben's a pretty cosmic dude. Yeah, man, I'm trying to think. I, I feel like the first advice I got was. Um, was the lyrics are everything. Right.
right. and and right. it was when my old man we were listening to the Eagles Lion Eyes and my old man was like, What's he talking about, son? I'm like, I have no idea, man. He's like, Well listen to it again. And we went over it for a long time yeah. until he helped me figure it out. So right. Lyric is King. Lyric is King. Now let me ask you this question. Let me add to this. Do you feel like Lyric is King in all forms of music? No. What what music is Lyric King in? What kind of music? Country. Right. Classic rock. Well song songwriter. Yeah, song, songwriter and country. Songwriter, song. I wouldn't even go classic rock. I don't think I know. You can't even hear what they're saying. No. McCute said one time, he said there's there's no such thing as hit lyrics. What do you think about that? I can see that. I mean, man, the melody, I don't even know what they're saying half the time. Like Mick Jagger and Robert Plant's like, what are they saying? It doesn't what are they matter. Saying? But in country music, it certainly matters. It certainly right? matters. It certainly it's, matters. It certainly matters. So that. And what I wish somebody would have told me was, man, learn your shapes. Oh, yeah. Get like away it's... from the three. Get away from the third fret and learn your stuff up there. Right. To get away from them cowboy chords. Get away from them. It's cool money. to be a cowboy, but man, when, if that's all you know, it's not cool. <laughs> I mean, Joey, you've had all this time to prepare. Oh, Amazing yeah. answer, right? I'm going to need the hat. Joey, <laughs> Joey is the guy, the mastermind behind so many huge hit records. Producer, he's got amazing ears. He's been doing this shit for very large the skull. Hat, the hat fits. The hat fits immaculately. Okay, great. So, best piece of musical advice you ever got, and and give me the age when you learned this. Uh, I was forty three. Okay. Forty two. Forty one. Okay. I'm not that old. Thirty one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, learn how to read a chart. Okay. And don't spook the band. Don't spook the band. Yeah. Don't Go. give the band too much information too early. Okay. And allow Elaborate them to become, on that, please. Allow them to become inspired by whatever piece of music you're working on. And I allow see. them to create instinctively and see where that goes. And yeah. then add. And then you and edit. Interject and edit yeah, and help that. along yeah, the way. Because yeah. spooking the band can lead to a very unproductive session. Do you remember who taught you that? Uh, some names that show some friends that show remain nameless. <laughs> <laughs> I shan't incriminate them in this conversation. Don't <laughs> speak the man. That might have been my own advice. No incrimination. Yeah. That might have been my own advice. That's some self. Dave told me to learn how to read a chart. Yeah. Well, okay. Now, learning how to read a chart. Now, here's a chart. We have an episode. Here it is. So you really didn't know how to read a chart when you first came here from from all those hit records you made. No, we didn't do that in rock and roll. We just would sing notes to each other. And, like, okay. Jack Black style. So you made all those early Nickelback records that get, were hugely successful. We didn't, did. we didn't know how to do any of that. You didn't know how to do it. We just knew like campfire chords and power chords. And right. Stuff. So you just did you just teach the guys the parts or how did it work? No, I mean, they were, it was a different scenario. It's not like Nashville. They were a band. It was more of a Petri dish scenario where they would right. write songs together and create music together. And right. then it's a matter of just extracting the vision out of their brains and putting it into tangible form and yeah. helping them do that. Right? Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, we all learned how to do all this together back in the day. So right. it was... We didn't have anybody above us teaching us how to right. do it. It was just a matter of... And this all happened in Vancouver, right? Vancouver. And, and, then, and then when you moved here, which, how long ago, roughly? Uh, ten and a half years ago okay. or so. Uh, what was, what did you, what are some of the first shit you noticed when you first came to Nashville about how different it was, like good or bad? Well, everybody know? here is amazingly talented. It's again. It's like when you're recording bands. It's a different scenario. Right. Like that's you got three, four, five guys that learned how to play music together, and what they know is what they know as a collective. Right. And you have to learn how to communicate how they communicate to each right. other and help them that way. Where yeah. here, everybody is a professional musician. They know how to read music and read charts, and they right. speak a more fluent language. Which I didn't know when I got here. Yeah. I was just a rock guy. I would sing parts to people, which 
isn't the most inspiring move to do at times. Well, but you have an amazing ear, and all the parts you sing are usually exactly what sometimes, the song needs. Yeah, sometimes. Tom, are you just avoiding think. answering the question yourself? I I can answer the question, but I, I don't know. How, you well, hold here, the I can. I'll tell you. you want to hold the camera? Yeah, I gotta have the hat. You gotta hold the hat. I gotta have the hat. No. Which you've earned, by the way. My, I did earn it. See, I'm, if you win the thing, you get to sign it. Brian won the first one. Yeah. Okay, I have a giant head, so oh, wow. let's just see if it fits. It's gonna be okay. Okay, uh, I, I, I think I've talked about this in one of my previous episodes. Uh, I've had a couple of really key pieces of advice that were given to me at times when I really needed it badly. Uh, I want to credit a guy who I've already credited on the show, but my dear friend Steve Cox, amazing piano player, who taught me all kind of shit when I was probably in my late 20s. He showed me all kind of jazz shit, and he, showed, he taught me that everything you play the real homeschoolers who have already seen my old videos will already know the answer to this, but I'm going to say it again, because good advice can be repeated, right? Uh, everything you play should frame the vocal. Just think about that. Every single thing you play should frame the vocal. Right? Correct. On any instrument, right? If we're making pop music or, you know, country music and like I, I blast the, the fader on the vocal on even if it's a terrible singer on a session I blast that fader louder than hell because I just want to know what the what the vocals doing at all times and the only time I ever walked out on a session in my entire life was when a guy accused me of not listening to the vocal and boy that pissed me off he said he said, let me play that back for you so you can hear how it's clashing with the vocal. And I said, I said, dude, it's the root note of the chord. There's no safer note that I could play. And he goes, you want to argue about what note it is or you want to play something that sounds good? And I went, click, click, shut the amps off, left the session, walked out. That was, because I don't care if they say I have shitty time, shitty tone, can't get in tune. Do not accuse me of not listening to the vocal. That is my thing. I can't, I can't take it. Like I think I, I did that one. You should see how loud I've got your vocal on there. Ben, first of all, uh, we this how many sessions have we done for Ben over here? Like, this record's got to be almost finished, This is right? probably four or five? Yeah, four we're at 11, 11 songs. How's this hat look on me? Look awesome, man. Does he like it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, we done? No, we got more to talk about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you have your second piece of advice. You, you said oh, there's oh, there's there's been about. a there's been a lot. Um, God, that was a huge one for me. Brian was that, just zooming in on his own signature. That was a, that was a huge one for me. Um, you know, uh, what what uh, I know he was joking around, but who said about the money? Who said that? Jerry Rowe. Jerry Rowe. Yeah. Okay. I, I was I wasn't really joking around. Yeah, it's, it's really like I as, you know, yeah, okay. I got into a bad situation once where I didn't clarify the money and like it was bad. Well, dude, as much as we all peace and love and everybody loves playing music and everything, you got to admit musicians are a little silly in the fact that we're like one of the only occupations that will do all the work up front and then hope to get paid later, right? right. And there isn't a whole lot of legal recourse. There isn't. Like, I mean, you think a roofing company would come over and do all that shit? You think, uh, you like, it's like a, we're kind of like a restaurant in the sense that you trust that the person's going to pay after they eat all the food. They do it up front, right? right. But, I mean, I mean, I just feel like uh, that stuff gets overlooked a lot. And we get, and there's a lot of real slow paying record labels and you know you do all the work up front you know but that's not this has nothing to do with advice but i just thought it was interesting that you said that musical advice i think just frame frame the vocals it that's it for me that's been and my brother told me one time not music related he said if you can't afford to pay cash for something you can't you can't buy it you shouldn't buy it that's life advice you ever, you ever heard that one yeah. don't ever use a credit card is what he said I still have never done that. Used a credit card? Never used one. Oh. Yeah, never used one. More hey, but, sound musical advice? Uh, yeah, go ahead. More Phil Rudd, less Phil McFlurry. Fucking A. 
Yeah. Fucking A for sure. Brian, anything you want to add? I think so, Tom. Okay. Did we cover it all? We got Jerry, it. Jerry, anything? I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah, good? okay. All right. Dave? You feeling good? Great. <laughs> good talks, guys. Homeschool <laughs> dude! Dave, could what you up? update us on the status of Piano Bomb?